So you probably have to be living under a rock not to understand that there is a lot of pain coming to the commercial real estate market. I think the bigger question and one that very few have dug into is, will the commercial banking or the commercial real estate market impact regional banks and cause more bank failures? Somebody who has dug into this is the one and only Lance Lambert from Fortune. How are you doing, sir? Doing great. And uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, always a lot going on. Uh, instead yeah. of housing, housing, housing today, I'll say real estate, real estate, real estate. There you go. There you go. Well, uh, this is a topic that I think warrants a lot of discussion. Uh, I have uncovered facts that I'm sure you know. Commercial banks were responsible for 60 plus percent of commercial loans. They played a lot in jumbo loans. And, and they, they are very active lenders. And they're obviously going through pain with First Republic being the latest uh, to be acquired, I think, by J.P. Morgan. There's a lot of talk. Will there be more? And you've done some digging. So uh, what'd you find? Yeah. Uh, so I took a look. Uh, well, so take a step back. So in 2020, I, in June 2020, I reached out to Fed uh, president in Minneapolis, uh, Neil Kashari, and we, we spoke two times. And I reached out to him to ask the question, if commercial real estate could cause a financial crisis. And you the, asked this in 2020? Three years ago, yes. And we had Bill wow. Kashari, you know, he's a busy guy. You know, he's turned down all my interviews the past year. But it's interesting that he made time to talk to me in 2020 about something that was very disconnected from their current crisis, which was COVID. And the reason I reached out is, you know, work from home that had taken off during the pandemic, it was looking like there was a chance that it could be sticky, right? We were only a few months in, but it looked like, People liked work from home. You know, it looked like it was already something that people wanted and employers had resisted it. And so it was like an economic unlock during the pandemic. And uh, what Neil said is they weren't too worried about it because the terms were so long, right? These leases and the banks would have time to deal with the, uh, the risk as, as, you know, they would be able to manage the risk, right? That's what okay. he said. What happened since then is one, inflation broke out. And two, that meant that we had to move into a higher rate environment. So the occupancy rate and you know work from home stuck around. So the occupancy rates continue to go down, the property values go down. And now uh, you know a lot of these places are having to refinance. These loans are coming up uh, in, a, in a period where uh, you know rates are higher. And so Goldman Sachs uh, or Morgan Stanley, as it that most of these loans are going to go up 350 to 450 basis points. So oh, the cost of debt. Wow. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and so that occurred. And we've already known about this for 12, 13 months, right? Well, the next shoe to fall, bank failures. Right. We had some bank failures. And so now we're seeing some tightening of lending. And they're also, and it's already tightened up for commercial, uh, for office, but it's not just office. It's moving throughout all of yes. commercial, right? right? So they're, they're not, you know, uh, you know, they're not being a selective, um, uh, they're it's, it's going to hurt all of commercial across and well, what does that do? That creates more commercial real estate problems, more defaults, more delinquencies. And what does that do? Creates more stress on the banking system. And so that's <laughs> oh, kind of, the feedback loop. Oh, I'm having flashbacks. Yes, exactly. And so the piece dives into that. And we looked at all of the uh, the uh, financial institutions across the country with at least 100 billion in assets and looked at how many commercial real estate loans they have. Um, some of the higher ones like M&T Bank, and they were just like this three years ago too, um, is... Uh, you know, like 30% of their loans are commercial. But then if you dive in deeper, 4% are office and 1% is New York City office. Um, so, so 4%, you said not 44. 4, 4%, 4 of total. So right. yes, 4% of total. And then 1% of their whole portfolio is like New York, New York. City uh, right. loans, uh, which of course is going to be a, one of the harder hit places by this. Um, and so the story will have a nice chart. It's actually the exact same chart that we did three years ago in the story, uh, which was kind of fun. Uh, Neil uh, didn't want to talk to us for this one. He turned us down, uh, which it would have been fun uh, to get him on the phone. I would have wanted to ask about some housing stuff too. 
Uh, but you know, that that's how it goes. Um, and I, I do think it's also interesting, some numbers that Zandi tweeted out recently, uh, actually this is from this week about their peak to trough for different commercial real estate asset classes. Okay. I, so I don't think I've seen this one. I think I missed it. So Moody's has office going down 25% peak to trough. Okay. He has uh next multifamily 12.5 wow. and uh retail he has 11 and then industrial 10 and these mostly bottoming like 2025 these are actually a little oh, more don't skip that part that's important and i want people to hear that again people yeah. are expecting this everybody expects this like v-shaped thing right down fast up fast i keep telling folks this is going to be a slower burn than you're inspecting so Mark, even Mark agrees. And I don't always agree with Mark. Mark is like, dude, this is a bottom in 2025, not yeah. 24, not 23, 2025. Sorry, yeah. but that's an important piece. And and uh, and then going into 26, we would still be well, well below the peaks. It's not like it's some big bounce off the bottom uh, is what his model has. And then Moody's, uh, you know, they're like eight, four tech, the tech for the for uh, for, uh, for U S home prices, uh, is their peak to trough. Uh, and you know, none of these, you know, my thing with these peak to trough numbers is I don't really care a ton about like the actual number, right. I care about like, what, what's the order here. Right. So, so Mar Zandy has single family being the safest and let's go and just say, let's say Columbus, Milwaukee, good school district, that's the most safest of any asset in real estate, essentially, right? Fair Let's enough. Yep. Sure. And then he has office 25. Well, San Francisco, I'd say, <laughs> would be oh, like- the Cali 350 effect. California Street is a comp now. It's at 73% yeah. off. And we've it's had crazy. this for about a year, but this is kind of this, you know, the- Yeah, no, I agree. You know, a office and then a ways down. Then it's, uh, what what does he have here? Then it's multifamily. Then it- retail, then industrial, um, uh, you know, it, it'd be interesting, but if, if this is, you know, I mean, this is a real estate cycle and these things take yeah. a while to play out. Um, yeah, it takes a while to play out. And again, I want to hit something that you're saying is, is everybody thinks real estate acts together. I have seen and proven over 23 years, the single family market and the small commercial market, they don't operate in the same they're, exactly. they're very disconnected. And that's why if you pay attention and you do the work, you can exit one and enter one and go back and forth. And I call it dancing through raindrops. It's all possible if you pay attention. Yeah. And, you know, th that's the interesting thing about uh, the pandemic is that, and it was also a lesson of probably it was inflationary, right? Because everything boomed. I mean, I'm, oh, yeah. let me put these numbers. Office prices went up. Office went up. And look at it. That was the start of the vacancies roaring. Yes. Uh, exactly. So, yeah, vacancies up twenty percent, but values up. What? What happened? I mean that 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 tells you right there that that was you know, and it just it, it was like an every like you know everything bubble. Yeah, everything. But then you know the thing about the word everything bubble is it kind of implies that everything's going to pop when it's like ah, everything no. bubble. But if everything goes up, that's just inflation, right? <laughs> you know. That's just, yeah. you know, uh, so uh, I, I I think that's interesting, but it will be interesting to see how these cycles roll out. And uh, the bear here is actually Morgan Stanley. Uh, oh. I think there's a scenario office peaks to trough 40%. Um, and uh, that'll hurt. Yeah, that's uh, that's where. Yeah, that that's uh, and that's like a hard landing. Um, oh, no oh and that's another thing to keep in mind with all of Moody's forecast is Mark is some. He, Mark has been in the, uh, he kind of thinks it's, the, he, you know, even when everybody was getting bearish last year, Mark is kind of still in this, like, we probably can soft land. It's just going to slow growth type. That's where his models kind of go to. And if we don't, and we have a recession and unemployment hits 6%, that's when, at least for single family homes, I know he gets more bearish in his models. I'm going to go and assume that's probably the case for commercial too. Because, I mean, unless, you know, recession occurs and people are afraid and those, you know, offices start to fill up, 
Uh, you know, that's the only thing I can see there, but uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how this all goes. And, uh, you know, it'll be a full page spread in the magazine uh, this next nice. issue. So, you know, if you're in the airport or in a store, you know, maybe pick one up. There you go. Again, folks, Lance Lambert comes back every week uh, at Writer for Fortune. And how do they follow you on Twitter? Because you're a great follow. Yeah. At News Lambert's the Twitter handle. Folks, if you follow One Rental at a Time, do me a favor. Send Lance a note today. Say thank you for being here at One Rental at a Time. Thanks, bud.